Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 15. Love to have you with us. Uh, prayer walkers still meet each Sunday morning at 8 30. Uh, they walk around the church here and, and pray for our services. Uh, if you can't be with us in person, remember you can always uh, watch on live stream uh, on Facebook uh, or on the YouTube channel at Real Gold Hill. Uh, praise team is going to be practicing next month. Uh, so get ready for that. VBS is going to be underway this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, let's see. Miranda is going to be collecting the last of the recipes for the church's new recipe book. They are due today, so uh, make sure you see her today. Uh, she's going to be getting those ready, and uh, they will be um, put up for sale. Um, Sunday school breakfast is going to be next Sunday, so be with us. July 30th at 9 a.m. Everyone is invited. Don't want to miss it. Also, August 6th, uh, we're having worship at Dan Nicholas Park at 10.30 a.m. Um, it's going to be a fun-filled day with uh, covered dish lunch, so don't forget about that. We have uh, tithing opportunities for you. The boxes at your exits here, you can mail those in, or we also have the Giveify app. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Just a couple of other things. If you're a first-time visitor with us, uh, please make sure that you get a welcome card. Our outreach committee has them for you. They are over in the uh, information desk, as well as uh, the Our Daily Breads. Pick up one as we're getting well into these now. There's still a few left that are over at the information desk. But whenever we ask you to, to take one of these, we ask you to fill it out and drop it in the tithing boxes over there so that we'll have a, a record of your visit with us. It means a lot to us. Hey, Mark Harrison and Crystal and I went to district conference yesterday, and I'm going to talk about that here in just a moment. But before I do any of that, I want to introduce you to this beautiful baby, as I said that I would, uh, this is Abraham Jefferson Fortner, born July 19th. I think that's also Ralph's and Don's birthday as well. So uh, we're going to have a lot of birthdays on July 19th. Uh, eight pounds, four ounces. The baby is still doing good. Last I heard, everybody was good, and we're so thankful for that. And I know Michaela is very grateful, and Alice is very grateful too. So, again, congratulations. Isn't that a beautiful child, and God just keeps blessing? Let me tell you something. I, I said something about conference uh, for more than just the initial reason. Uh, there are a lot of churches, a lot of pastors I sat with yesterday, and they are not blessed as we are with all these little babies. So we need to not take it for granted. It is a wonderful, wonderful thing. We're talking about VBS this week, and you know, uh, Miranda's got a lot of volunteers that are all put in place, but if you'd like to be a part of that still, you can still uh, help her out. I'm sure she would appreciate it. That's coming up this week. We are so blessed to have so many young children, and we need to have a heart for the young children because if we don't, folks, the uh, church, church is going to die. You know, that's what happens when we all get old, and we all get old fast, don't we? The brevity of life is an incredible fact, and uh, we need to just continue to thank God for what he's doing in our church and bringing these young ones and these young families, and I just can't praise him enough for that, and I hope it makes you ex excited and uh, very grateful. Does it make you excited and very grateful? Would you tell your faces that? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yes, it is. I tell you, I, you know, I'll never forget this. There was a church. I mean, it wasn't this church. But there was a church one time where uh, Hope, when she was uh, very little, she was going to sing a, a song, a little solo. And she got up to the front of the church, and she looked at the people. She was terrified. She handed me back the microphone. This was early in my ministry. She wouldn't sing. She said, all those people just looked like they were so angry. <laughs> it's so true. If I had mirrors up here, you know, just put a smile on those faces. Be grateful. God's given you another day. Hey, we're going to uh, be looking at the state of the church today. So I want you to just, like I said, we went to conference yesterday, Mark and Crystal and I, Mark Harrison and Crystal and I went to a conference, and conference is one of those things where it's important that you know what's going on in your denomination and in your district, but really, I sat in my chair an awfully lot and heard a lot about other churches. Uh, I didn't hear a lot about our church, which in one way is really good because that means there's really no controversial topic in our church, but in another way, you know, I was so proud of our church, and so I decided really before we even went to conference that this week I was going to spend today talking about our church, about what's been going on in our church, and, and just to make you aware of some things in our church. You may not even be aware of how God has been working. I want to also say up front here that 
These four years of ministry at Gold Hill Wesleyan have been some of the most difficult times of ministry in our church, not because I haven't enjoyed it, but because of the COVID situation. It has been one of the most difficult things to try to be effective in ministering the gospel to people during the COVID crisis, trying to do it online, trying to do it uh, by telephone, trying to do it by text and so forth. Just now, we're finally starting to get to where we can interact a lot more, things getting back to normal. We're going to talk again in Acts chapter 2. I want you to, us to look at it for just a moment uh, and talk about the purposes of the church. You know, every time that I talk about the purposes of the church, I bring up our former member who is uh, gone to be with the Lord now, Jack Evans. And the reason I do that, and of course that's Keith's uncle, Keith uh, and Dana Horton over there. And the reason I always bring up Keith's uncle is because his name and what he did in life, it's, it's easier for me to remember Jack Evans than it is the five purposes of the church. But if I can remember Jack Evans, all of a sudden I can think of the five purposes of the church. Because Jack's last name was Evans, so obviously I think of evangelism. He was in the service. He served in the Navy, so service is the second uh, purpose of the church. Uh, the next thing is he was on warships because he was in the Navy, so it's easy for me to think of worship. He was also a fellow, obviously, so it's easy to think of fellowship. And he wanted to be a disciple because he came to church. He wanted to follow Christ, so it's easy for me to think of a discipleship. So it's the five purposes. Now, you may have other preachers that will read into all sorts of things and different kinds of uh, purposes for the church. I'm convinced there's five purposes of the church, and if we do these five things effectively, then we're doing the will of God. And so anytime you can't remember what the purposes of the church are, just think of Jack Evans. He'd probably be complimented by that today. He'd probably really like that today. So uh, we're going to talk about these five purposes of the church, and I want us to look at where they came from. They're in Acts chapter 2, as I said before. This is where we get those five purposes. Look with me at this passage of Scripture, Acts 2, uh, verses uh, 42 through 47. They, meaning the church, the New Testament church, after Jesus has already ascended to the Father, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and there is where we get discipleship and evangelism, and to fellowship, obviously fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer, also some fellowship there. Everyone was filled with awe, which I think is worship, at the many uh, wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And I've got that word there, worship. All the believers were together and had everything in common. And that's really discipleship. You know, we're together, we're growing off of one another, we're, we're learning and we are uh, appreciating what God is doing in our lives. Look at this next thing. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. That's definitely service. They are serving those who are less fortunate. They are serving their community by giving up things and, and bringing what they have to offer to the gathering of the church. We continue. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Remember I said that about our faces? We need to have glad and sincere hearts. And that's fellowship again. And it's also worshiping again, coming together and praising God, it says there. Look at that. So obvious that they're coming together to worship Him. And it says because they were doing this, they were enjoying the favor of all the people. I think that doesn't just mean within the church, but the people outside the church admired them for what they were doing. They had a joy in their hearts, something that was connected. Contagious. You know, uh, I, I ask myself when I enter a room, do I light it up or do I, you know, make people want to run away? What's, uh, you know, how do you feel when you go into a room? Are you a dark cloud that hovers over it and kind of, uh, you know, a party's on and then you show up and everybody goes home, right? Or are you someone that people say, man, what, what they've got the joy in their heart. I want part of that. I want whatever he's, you know, I, I'll have whatever he's having because they're having, enjoying it so much. And sometimes I don't think we come across, I maintain we don't come across uh, in, in so, such love with Jesus that people don't see us enjoying our fellowship with him and certainly not our fellowship with each other. You know, you've always heard of the prune-faced Christian and the churchgoer and sour faced and so forth. I, I don't want us to be that way. I want us to, to rejoice in Christ and the people who see us coming together for worship it's seeing us enjoying that and praising God and winning their favor. And if we do that, and we do the purposes that God has set out for us to do, I believe He'll hold up His end today as He did then. Look what it says next. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That means He'll bring more people. That means 
He'll bring more into his kingdom, not just into Gold Hill Wesleyan Church, but more salvations to those who are lost. If we do our part, we could be a a powerful weapon in that. We could play a great role in that, a great part in that. But we have to ask ourselves, hey, am I just a good Christian when I come to church? Am I just joyful when I come to church? Or am I joyful when people encounter me at the job? When they encounter me at the store, do they see joy in my heart? Or is it just, you know, when you get up in the morning, do you say, good morning, Lord, or good Lord morning? How do you feel? What what frame of mind as you enter the day do you have? I want to be playing a part in the kingdom. I want our church to play a part in the kingdom. So again, we look at the five purposes. Evangelism, service, worship, fellowship, and discipleship. How are we doing? Well, I want to talk about it for just a moment. Let's talk about evangelism first. Evangelism, of course, means new births into the kingdom, new new commitments. And and one way we've done that is through baptismal services. We had uh, over the last four years, and we're going to be looking at all these four years. Remember now, we lost a lot of time because of COVID. But God has been at work. Tony, Joy, Claudia, Chad, Troy, Miranda, Yvonne, Robert. We're all baptized in that time. And I want to thank Charles Miller for providing the baptismal out here. I want to thank the Kimrys when they, we use the, uh, their pool, uh, Justina's pool. I, I'm so grateful for them preparing it for us. And we're looking at doing another baptismal service in late August if it works out with Charles. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, we would love for you to be a part of that. If you say, I've never been baptized, I want to be baptized, hey, I would be blessed and honored to be able to baptize you. But if you've been baptized when you were a child, you say, I need to do that again, hey, I'm all for it. If you want to show a fresh commitment, we've done that before too. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. We brought in new members in the last four years. God sent them to us and they made a commitment. We have the Hortons. We had the Coleys. Uh, Julie. We had Miranda. We had Emily uh, 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 Harrison. Excuse me. I, I just t- typed first names because I didn't have enough room for all this. We had the Mabins. We had Rick. We had uh, Daniel. We had Robert. We had even little Siddeley and Emma to become uh, student members. We had new and returning attendees to come from 2019. So many of you are here, and you just started being a part of our church within the last four years, and I am so grateful for your presence. And we should all thank God for sending some of them back to us and some brand new faces. I praise God for every one of you. Evangelism is something that happens with special services sometimes in in the fact that there's repentance and commitment that is uh, lit within us. Some people find salvation for the first time. Lane Lohman came and he preached revival services last year and he's coming again this year in October. It promises to be a very big weekend because I'll tell you something else, that's when we're also planning to have the Tough Gus Car Show. The same weekend Lane's going to be here. And one reason we did that, and I'm so thankful for the Pethels for this, is because my uncle Lane loves old cars. So he's going to be here then. We're going to just say, hey, we did it all for you, Lane. Not really, but. I will tell you, the district superintendent uh, that was elected yesterday, uh, he's brand new. His name is Tim Jones, a wonderful man. Uh, I met him. He did know my uncle, ironically. Uh, I was not aware of that for some time, but uh, I told him that my uncle was coming in October from Indiana. He said, I want to be there. So I want you to take, you know, take the time when you go home today and circle that Weekend, that first weekend in October, it's like the 5th, 6th, 7th, 6th, 7th, I don't remember what it is. But anyway, circle that and say, hey, this is the big weekend. I, I don't want to miss this. I want to be there. Friday night, Saturday for the car show, Saturday night for services, and Sunday morning for I want to be there for that. That's a big weekend for our church. And I believe God will bless us for that. So we move from evangelism to service. There have been so many things that the church has done when it comes to service. I want to talk about just a few of them. So click that for me there, Andy, so we can move on. There we go. First of all, last year alone, local and missions, uh, local missions and in international missions, there was thirteen thousand one hundred thirty-eight dollars and forty-six cents that were raised in our church. You know that every time that you give to our church, a tenth of what you give to our church goes to missions. And I'm so proud of our church for doing that. So many churches aren't doing anything. 5% of it goes to local missions, and you can see some of those that we support right there. They're split. Half of that number is split to them, and the other half goes to international missions in the Wesleyan Church. 
I spoke with uh, two of our missionaries yesterday that are in Cambodia. And I told them, I said, we'd love for you to come and, and speak to our congregation if you have some time this fall. They're just in on furlough because, I, honestly, because she is getting ready to have a baby. And so, I, you know, this is the place to be for babies. And so I said, you know, you need to come to Gold Hill and, and speak and share with us what you're doing in Columbia. We're so thankful. And I'm so blessed by what we're doing to support our Wesleyan missionaries, the Collins and the, the Casey's, uh, or Casey's uh, over, I can't say where she is, but the Collins family as well. Uh, we went to West Virginia. We continued to support West Virginia with our Christmas box drive and, and helping the children up in that region that's very impoverished. And I'm so thankful for every December we bring uh, gifts to them. And this year it looks like we're actually going to get to take a group back up to West Virginia. We did it our first year when we were back in 2019. Hopefully we can do it again. We would love for you to do that. Be a part of it. Go up to West Virginia to some very rural, poor areas and just appreciate what God has done for you and be a blessing to someone. Not only that, but we were able last year for the first time to support Granite Quarry Elementary School with some toys through the work of Emily Harrison and, and uh, just the work of all of you contributing to that. I mentioned the car and truck show that's, uh, that's happening. Of course, that was a great fundraiser. For uh, the Galloway family, Gus and his family, we're so thankful for all those who supported that. I thank the Pethels for organizing that and so many who participated and assisted. We hope to do it, as I said again, this year in October. We did something that we're still kind of getting started, and that is committees. And the committees are starting to try to get together to, to, to maybe uncover some ideas and some ways we can serve that we haven't thought about in the past. And it requires you to serve on committees to do that. That's why it's so important. It gives the board some ideas that maybe we couldn't have uncovered before. I can't say enough about our children's ministry. We have wonderful men and women volunteering to work on Sundays in children's church. It used to be toddler time. Now we're calling it preschool. We have a new uh, preschool Sunday school class. We have a, a great nursery group. I'm thankful for each and every one of those who do it. I'm thankful for Denise for organizing our uh, greeter ministry. And if you'd like to be part of that, I would encourage you to speak with her about it. Speaking of Denise, I want to thank Fred. He's handled a lot of the cleaning of the church here recently. There have been a lot of folks who've helped cleaning the church throughout the years. We need to get back in, that back in order to where Fred's not carrying all that. And I'm so grateful for everyone who has served in that role. Some other things we did that were of service several years ago, we did Cards for a Cause that sent out cards to the military for Christmas, and that was something that I think we got a great blessing from. We've had winter, uh, winter clothes drives and winter sock drives. The Mayhews and the Eagles have helped with these ministries. And that's just a, a portion of some of the things that we've done when it came to service that I want to continue to see us do and expand in those ministries. Then we look at worship. I praise God for our, our praise team and the way we're evolving and growing. We've got Alec and Troy and Don and Emily and Heather and Miranda and Darlene. I want to thank Elaine for the music that she, she brings. I want to thank God for what he's done at, in the Christmas programs that we've shared, some of the hard work that was done. I think of the great set that was done by the Earnhardts and, and uh, the adults, uh, Andy and, and uh, Mark and Carrie and uh, all of them who helped uh, with the adult uh, Christmas program, and then we had the children who did their wonderful version of, of the uh, night in Bethlehem. I'm grateful for them and those who worked with them. As I mentioned, the missionary speakers, we had them to come uh, last year, some virtually, and some were actually here with us. We had special concerts like Mercy's Well that were with us. We had VBS last year, and it was the first time we had had a full week of VBS. Even though it was three days, it was the first time we had been able to do it in some time because of COVID. We used to have like one day or something. We're finally getting back to the normalcy, and God has grown us enough to where we can have a wonderful VBS. And I thank, again, Miranda for taking that on and the helpers who have volunteered this year. Family First Sunday is always a blessing with the children here. Again, we can appreciate what God has done with our children. We've had men's and women's conferences. Men's and women's conferences that now we had two women's conferences this year that were held in the Family Life Center. Uh, previously, the men had gone off to uh, Virginia, and now they came back and they had theirs here. Show me those ugly men there for a second. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. We had, yeah, those, that, well, where are, no, 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 go back. Yeah, there, there's those ugly guys right over here. 
See, there's me and Andy right there. Those are the two. What a wonderful time that we've had, and, and we've been able to encourage and propel one another forward. I praise God for those times of intimate conversations that we've had when we take these trips and we share and we ask God to work in our lives. I thank God for bringing our prayer walkers together each Sunday. Chris invites you every Sunday to join our prayer walker team. We currently have Jan and Tony and Julie and Helen and Donnie and my wife, Crystal. We go around every chair and we pray over them, asking God to have his way in our heart. Over the last four years, we did creative things like uh, we egged homes whenever we couldn't have Easter egg hunts. Y'all may not even remember that. What we did was we took eggs to the house. It sounds worse than it is. We took plastic eggs and we hid them at the homes of children. So when they woke up, they could go and they could find the Easter eggs. And that was something that a lot of volunteers, it couldn't have happened without your volunteering. There were some other things like the children's drive-in that we did here. And babies, babies, babies. Look at these beautiful children I've got on the next slide. We've had so many baby dedications. The ones four years or younger, like I said, just from 2019, we had June and Keely and Isla and Trax and Braylon and Renly and Amelia. And I can't wait for Abraham. And I even see another baby with us today that I'm excited to see. That's, that grandma's got smothered close to her, won't let her go. And I'm so thankful for all of them. I didn't even mention those that were uh, over four years old, like Sita and Emma and Benson. We had Father's Day, an old-fashioned day that we combined together as a time of worship. And, and over the years, we've had Father's Day sharing from like the likes of Robert and Fred and, and John and Don and Brantley and Rick. We've had candlelight communion. Wonderful times of worship in our church over the last four years. And then the next purpose is fellowship. And what can I say? You know, Sunday school breakfast is a great time. It astounds me how we might run 40 in Sunday school. But, buddy, Sunday school breakfast comes around. We have 88. So I'm expecting a big crowd next Sunday. And if you don't come to Sunday school, please come to Sunday school breakfast. We want you to be here. We don't care if you go to, well, we want you to go to Sunday school, but if you don't, still come to Sunday All we do is eat breakfast and we have morning worship, so you're off the hook for Sunday school. But at least come. We want to fellowship with you. We want to have a good time with you. We've had small group outings and Sunday school class outings. Uh, my class has done hockey and baseball, and I know that the senior class and our class has done movies, and there's been parties throughout the adult class and our class and meals. We've had Christmas outings. I mentioned Old Fashioned Day. We've had the Passover dinner. We've had Trunk or Treat, and we've had Egg Hunts, and Victory Mountain Camp Day, and we've had baby and wedding showers. Shucks, we even had a wedding. We had our Dan Nicholas Park outing last year, April 22nd, and again this year. It's going to be in two weeks, and we hope you can be there with us. We have the shelter for the entire day on August the 6th. I hope you'll bring a covered dish and make that a part of your day as we worship God together. We even tried fellowship with the Family Life Center walkers, but I think that kind of lost a little traction after a while. But it doesn't mean everything is going to be successful, but it does mean that we want to try to be the church God would have us to be. And we learn along the way. Lastly, I want to talk about discipleship. I know not all of our Sunday school teachers are here right now, but the ones that are here, I'd like to see you. Would you stand so everybody can see who the Sunday school teachers are? Just jump right up. Tell them we appreciate them. I can't emphasize enough how important small group ministry is. And let me tell you why. And I don't say this to make anybody feel bad or guilty or anything. But small group ministry is so important in making you a part of our congregation because you are more likely to leave or find it easier to leave the fellowship of the church if you're not a part of small group ministry. Now, that's not the, everyone. You know, that doesn't mean everybody. But the tendencies and the statistics show that if you're not part of a small group, you don't feel a part of the ministry there. Like people care and love you like we want to. And it's easier for you to walk out the back door. That's why we want you here, so we can show you we care and we love you. Everyone is invited to be a part of our small group ministry. 
we get back, Lord willing, to uh, Carry Hope Ministries in the fall and uh, uh, as we go online again in prayer time. We did have midweek matters for various years whenever Don was leading it and also Bible studies throughout and we plan to do another 40 days of prayer and fasting leading up to our big weekend that's coming up in October. If you'll get up with me at 6.30 in the morning, you can see it live. Otherwise, you'll just have to watch it on YouTube or Facebook later on. We want everybody reading the Word. That's why we get the Our Daily Breads. We hope that you are reading your Bible. I have a prayer partner group with some dear friends, Jamie and Don, and we meet every week and pray for our church. We had the Shemitah prayer service throughout the Jewish Shemitah year, asking for God to provide for the needs of our church as we can see that he has done. And we had March to the Manger back in 2019, which was a huge success, in which every time that the church gave $1,000, we would put a new poinsettia up. Our goal was to raise $10,000. Much more came in, which helped us to have the financial stability to continue to do what we needed to do in the name of the Lord and to pay off our building, which we hope we're going to get to do within a very short time. In 2019 to through 2023, as I mentioned, it's been some of the most challenging days, not only for me personally as a minister of the gospel and for our church because of COVID, but the modern church itself has never seen days like this. I sat with pastors yesterday who are pastoring two churches, and both of them may fold. I sat with other pastors who had nowhere to go, and I listened to the pastors who spoke from the podium. Uh, our district superintendent tell me about churches who had no pastors. There's never been a time that's been more difficult that I know of in the Western church. But we can change that through the Holy Spirit's blessing if we would decide that we would want to pour out our hearts to Him. And if it is His will, He can work through us. Now, if it's God's will to close the church, there's nothing we can do about that. If it's God's will that He do something different in these days than reach people through the church, we can't change His mind. Well, we might could change His mind, but if it's His ultimate plan to do that, then He's going to do that. But I believe that He's still not finished with His church. I believe He said in His Word that the gates of hell will not stand against it. And I believe He wants to use us today, but we need to be replenished with the power that can only come from the Holy Spirit. But there are many accomplishments in our church in those difficult four years that I want to share with you now. The last four years brought online streaming services. That's something we'd never done before. And I got to tell you something. I didn't realize how old I was until I started trying to figure out technology. And seeing myself online didn't help the fact. But the church developed online streaming services, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels. I owe a lot to uh, Miranda Maben and to my own daughter, Carrie, for helping with that, as well as some of the others. But COVID struck in the spring of 2020, and we started to have outdoor services. Me and Andy used to get here early in Crystal, and we would start to set up things. I was so proud of our church, as I said before, because of the COVID mask, we were willing to undertake that so that people would feel comfortable outside, and then we brought it inside. I want to thank Teresa for her hard work with getting GiveLify established online. Man, that was, that was wonderful for us. You can imagine what it was like in those days when people were not coming to church. You're thinking, how are, they going to, how are we going to even manage? How are we going to make it? And that was something that we were willing to try, and I'm so grateful for that. And I thank my board for being so brave. I want to show you something that I hope makes you almost want to shout hallelujah. Are you ready to shout hallelujah? All right, one of you is... Two, three. I want to show you this. Our loan balance in 2019 on June the 30th. The building. 164371 54 is what we owed. And we had $802 left in the building fund. June 30th, 2019. June 30th, 2023, we owe $50,978.51. And there's $13,000 in the building fund. Isn't that wonderful? It's because of God's faithfulness and the faithfulness that you feel that you have to serve Him. That's quite, that, that was something I looked at and I was just amazed at that. Things that have happened, we've repainted the Family Life Center and 
Some of the chapel, even Fred repainted. I'm grateful for that. We had the sign replaced out here. I'm grateful for Forrest helping uh, to get that sign replaced uh, physically. He came out one day, and he had me hold part of it, and we worked on that. And, of course, uh, we, uh, we know that that sign was dedicated to Glenn Deal. There was tile repair that Forrest also handled in the fellowship hall. We had the carpets cleaned in the fellowship classrooms, and I'm so excited right now. Troy and Daniel are working to get Wi-Fi for Children's Church over in the fellowship hall so that the kids can use some new uh, or can implement some new uh, material. We're grateful for that. The parking lot was sealed. Cemetery was improved in the fall of 2020. The computer system was also replaced that does all the projection. I'm very grateful. We had Millers and Troutmans that helped out with that many years ago. Membership direct directories and membership itself was updated by the board. We have a list of members now that we combined so many and finally got the, uh, the uh, complete list of our members, and it's been posted for some time now. Little things happened along the way. The piano was tuned. The van has been tuned and kept up in good condition, but we're thankful to the Galloways for that. The air condition has been uh, serviced, and there's been new thermostats that have been installed. I want to thank our trustees and also Ralph for helping with that. The board has continuously reviewed our security. We changed to a more efficient and inexpensive property insurance. The cross outside has now been relit. I want to thank Levi for that and, and Mark and others. And there were so many who worked on getting the gutters replaced. We looked at it a couple of months ago and we thought how in the world are we ever going to afford to replace the gutters the trustees the hortons others barry helped out in getting that done and it's paid for listen if i haven't mentioned someone by name i didn't mean to overlook you i just want to say this everyone in our church has supported the ministry here giving and serving and praying and now we need to invite now we have a product that I think we can be really proud of that God has put his hand upon and now we need to invite and we need to be committed to be here. You don't know how difficult it is when I go up and see somebody that's a first time visitor and say, hey, I'm Pastor Mark and they say, hi, I'm a friend of so-and-so and their friend isn't here. It's up to us to be in prayer and to come to our church. To invite people that we love, people we know, people in our household, people we come into contact with. And this year, as it starts a church year now, we need to ask ourselves, where is our place? Where is your place? Where are you best suited? Is it time for you to join our church? Is it time for you to actually become a member at Gold Hill Wesleyan? Is it time for you to get involved in a small group? Is it time for you to run for the board or to begin to serve as a greeter or lend your talents to worship? Is it time for you to organize a prayer group or assist in teaching one of our small groups or, or setting up a new small group or to get involved with children's ministry? Or is it simply time for you to recommit your life to Christ? Is it time for you to be baptized this year? I want to tell you, the doors are open for everyone to be a part of our church and to be a greater part of our church. We have future projects, of course. We have things we want to see happen. We have future goals. Of course, we want to see the building paid off. We want to see the flooring in here upgraded. We want to see the well house upgraded outside. And I know there's people looking at that, but I'm not just talking about physical things. I'm hoping we can add additional staff very soon. I'm hoping we can plan a new adult Sunday school class. And I'm hoping that God will give us numerical and spiritual growth. But there are challenges. In the last four years, we lost a lot of wonderful people. Some of you have lost moms and dads. And some of us lost extended family. Some of them were great pillars in our community and in our church. Some of us have gotten older. Some of us are tired. Some of us have undergone surgeries and hospital stays. And we have some of us who used to attend here that can't anymore because they're shut in. We're busier. We're busier. I asked the board 
during our annual dinner together where we do some brainstorming and we spend a little extra time together, I said, what do you think is the biggest challenge to our church? And I gave them a little post-it note and they could write anonymously what they thought the biggest challenge to our church was. And the number one answer that I got back was commitment. They thought commitment by our people was the number one challenge. Because frankly, there's too much that keeps us away. There's too many times we can be here that we're not. And I want to tell you something, not because of Pastor Martin to flatter him or anything like that, but it's different when we're crowded and people feel it. People come in and they feel the excitement. They feel that this is something that they want to be a part of, and they feel that God is working and moving here. But when we're not here and there's emptiness, they think, what's wrong? Why isn't God moving here? Am I welcome here? Why do people stay away? We let too much take us away from God's house. Now, I'm not begrudging anyone in a you know, few weeks vacation. But when we think of the things that we would never call in at work for, we call in to God for regularly and tell him, excuse me for not being at your house today. Didn't get a lot of amens on that one. Didn't expect it. Listen, society has weathered us and made us less trusting. And that's why we need to be together more. That's why we need to fellowship more. Because we have become a divided nation. And churches have become divided. And we ourselves are even vulnerable and prone to division. So we need to be in God's house. I want to show you some other numbers as they come to the end. Our budget in 2019, there was $123,000 brought in and only $91,000 went out. You say, hey man, everything looks great there. That looks really good. We had a we had an overflow of funds that came in. I want to tell you something. At that time, we were not paying our district assessment, which we are responsible to pay, and we were giving nothing to missions. So if you want to have an overflow of funds and not do what God instructs you to do, we can do that, but it won't last. But I want you to look at the way he's changed things. Yes, 104000 in 2020 and 115 went out. That's when we started our district assessments and also our missions work. In 2021, most of the physical work that I've already told you about got done. 103,000 came in, 122,000 went out. But look at 2022, last year, 129,000 came in, 129,000 went out. Sometimes, listen to me church, sometimes we can't see the miracle without stepping out of the boat. Peter never knew he could walk on water until he got out of the boat. The promised land waited on the other side of the Jordan. Sometimes unless we're willing to cross those things which seem unable to be crossed, we can't give God glory for bringing us into it. We can't realize the greatness of God or what He has done for us. So to be transparent, we started this year with $10,400 in the bank. And in June, you gave $7,800. You know something? I'm sorry, excuse me. In June 2022, you gave 7800 This year, I said this wrong. June of last year, 7800 June this year, you gave $11,009. $4,000 more. So God is blessing us, and people are feeling the responsibility. Our average attendance in worship, though, this year was down one in June than it was last year. But over the year, last year, this year, we're up 14. Our Sunday school group is up. Three. But in July of last year, over $14,000 was given. July of this year, 6000 I will grant you there was a big gift of an estate. The average attendance of worship, though, in July of this year is already up seven as compared to last year, both in worship and in Sunday school. God is setting the table. He's given us the potential to grow. But listen to me very carefully. It was not the disciples that brought the blessing, just as it will not be you and it will not be me. They were faithful to do what God had instructed them to do. But did you remember what I read at the end of Acts? It was God 
that brought the multiplication. It was God that added to it. It is God that will bring the people. But we need to be faithful in doing what he has called us to do and be fruitful in bearing fruit to witness what God is doing. Any blessing we have received over the last four years is due completely to God's grace and his love and his provision. It's not clever preaching. It's not better music. It's not better teaching. It's God stirring our hearts. And if you pray for people, you're going to see that there is going to be better preaching, better teaching, better music, and a move of God. I believe that. My Uncle Max used to say, and he pastored in, in uh, Burlington, he used to say there would be people come up to him you know, and say, my mom and dad don't like you very much. He, after he told them, just tell them to get in line. Um, then he would say, the quickest way to get rid of your preacher, you know what you do? I said, you pray for him every day. You slip him an extra $20 on every once in a while on a, on a Sunday, not telling you that you need to do that today. But I said, you pray for him every day. You slip him a little extra money. You lift him up before the Lord. You encourage him all you can. He'll preach himself to death, fall dead in the pulpit, and you can get yourself another pastor. I don't know about you, but I think we should rejoice because of God's goodness to us. Through the COVID months and year, God sustained us. And now it's time for us to pray to him for our future. And in doing that, I want to do one last thing, and then we'll dismiss. I want to ask our local board of administration if they'd come forward. Last year, we washed feet. This year, I want to do something different. Not because I didn't like washing your feet. Just I'd like to have them to come and stand with me. I want to install them formally for another year. year. Now, you know that we had the COVID situation. We had the, uh, come on, slide them down just a little bit, Chris, if you would. Uh, we had the uh, gutters, and we, had, we were involved in a lot of undertakings, and so we didn't change from last year to this year. But I want to do something a little different this year, and I think uh, it's important to bring them up so that you know who they are, and you can remember this, and you can pray for them. And I, I wanted to formally install them because we have not done that. Board members, I'd ask you to listen to this. Friends, it is recorded in the Acts of the Apostles that when the early church was growing and the number of disciples was multiplying and the duties of the church increased and became diversified that the church called its members together and chose those of good report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom to assist and administering the affairs of the church, and that the officers or the local board in this case that were chosen by the church were set before the apostles who laid hands on them and prayed, thus setting them apart in the presence of the church to the duties of their honorable office. And in like manner, our church, having first sought the guidance of the Holy Spirit, chose you when they elected you to your office, to be associated with those that were already in office, like your pastor here, and with me before whom you now stand and have come, we now stand before this congregation for public consecration. Therefore, this board and the pastor and the people of this church want God to hear us call upon him as we join together in a pledge of trust to one another And to his church. I would ask the board this question. Trusting in Jesus Christ. The great head of the church. Do you humbly promise him and his church. That you will be faithful to the extent of your ability. To all known duties and responsibilities assigned to you. As a board member of this church. To endeavor to be regular in your attendance. Cheerful in your service. Wholehearted in your giving open-minded in your planning, patient in the face of trials, persistent in the face of difficulty, and Christ-like in your faithfulness to His service? Will you seek by example and precept the promotion of Christian fellowship among our church and the spreading of the message of salvation, not only at the church, but at home and wherever you may go? Do you cheerfully and solemnly accept these obligations that I have asked you? If so, answer, I do. 
I would ask the congregation to please stand at this time. Every one of you, whether you're a member or not. We, the pastor and officers of this church, call upon you, the members and the faithful attendees and friends of our church, to hear and join in this pledge of loyalty to these who have been called of God and elected by the church as its leaders. Having chosen these members to become board members, to guide all of us in the administration of the church, I ask you, members and friends, to now pledge your loyalty to the church's work and promise that you will consider the plans of the church and you will be willing to cooperate in the service that they suggest and in that which we need to undertake, that you as a congregation will acknowledge your duty and declare your determination to pray for our leaders, to share with them in the glorious responsibility of spreading the good news, and that you, the church, will do this, hastening the coming of Christ, cheerfully and solemnly accepting the obligations that I have laid out before you, including faithful attendance and service. If you will be faithful in serving this church and praying for the, your leadership, would you say, I will? I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that right now. I would ask all who are able physically, if you would, I would appreciate it so much. You don't have to if you're self-conscious or if you're not a bigger part of this church, you feel uncomfortable, whatever. I don't want anybody to feel awkward. But it would thrill me to no end if you would come forward and stand with this local board and put your hands upon someone here. Get in front of somebody, lay your hands on them, and all of us have a prayer together for them. You can stand behind them. You can stand beside of them. You can stand in front of them, wherever you can find room. And if you can't touch a board member, touch somebody who's touching a board member. Everyone's welcome to come, everyone, no matter how long you've been with us. I mean, this is, this is your church, too, if you're able to come. And I want us to do something that, you know what, I don't know that we've ever done this. But I would ask every one of us who feels comfortable to pray aloud as I lead us in prayer. So we might hear a chorus of prayers going up to the Father for our church together. If you don't feel comfortable praying aloud, don't pray aloud. But you can whisper. And if you feel comfortable praying aloud, I ask you to call upon God for his blessing and let's settle for nothing less today. Let's pray together. Almighty God in heaven, I thank you for this local board. I thank you, Father, for the leadership you've brought here. I thank you for each one of them and for their service over the years. And I ask you today, Lord, to anoint them in a special way, that they might be given a special wisdom, that they might be given the opportunity to minister to those that we don't even see in the church yet by great decisions that will be made in the boardroom. I pray, Father, that you will give us the ability to discern what is right and wrong, that we will not be tricked or deceived by Satan, but that your Holy Spirit will penetrate our hearts and will set us on a straight path forward to do your will that our church might live and breathe with what the Holy Spirit senses is necessary for us to do that you might so clearly speak to us in a way that makes the path before us open and that you might keep the obstacles at a minimum for us help us father to be bold in our faith help us Lord to walk forward and Lord as this congregation has come and gathered to pray for this local board of administration and for their pastor I I pray today for them. I pray, Lord, you might give us one heart, that we might be united as one. And together, Father, we might see new souls saved, that we might see great things and great actions done in the name of Christ Jesus, that you might fill this congregation like never before, not only physically with new people, but with the manifestation of your Holy Spirit. May he come with such power and glory that we cannot help but be in awe of all that he is doing. We pray, Father, for those who are not with us today. We pray, God, because not talking about those on vacation. We're talking about those, Lord,
Lord who did not ever intend to be with us today, but that we love dearly those that are in our hearts, those that are in our lives and in our families that we want to see come to salvation in Christ. Use us today, Father. Help us to be truly uh, one knitted together, lifting one another up in prayer and praying for the families who are hurting in our congregation because their children are not yet under the blood of Christ. We don't want anyone condemned to hell. We want them brought before the Savior. We want to know the experience of loving Him and loving them with you. Father, we want to give you praise and glory as you take us into the promised land that you have laid out before us. We ask you now, Father, to make the way straight. Help us, Father, because there are going to be times when Satan's going to come after us with all of his might because we want to be doing the kingdom work. We want to continue to go forward in the name of Christ Jesus, and he will not like it. He will try to divide us. He will try to persecute us. Lord, do not let us fall victim to it, but help us to be totally and fully committed to completing the work that you have laid out before us. Help Gold Hill Wesleyan Church to be a leader in the community in bringing people to know the truth of God's Word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us to live for Him, never satisfied with where we are spiritually today, but rather looking forward to tomorrow and what you're going to do to establish your kingdom here in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, and in these church walls. Lord, help us to remember to pray for these leaders, to pray for the pastor, and to pray for the ministries of this church. Lord, set us on fire for the kingdom. Have your way today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Listen, one thing before you go, I did not plan it this way, but if you are healthy and can stack chairs, it would help the VBS group if you would grab some chairs, especially the men, and stack them so that we can put them up so VBS can be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. God bless you. God bless you.